Do you believe that in a world that glorifies sexual freedom, true satisfaction can only be found in holiness? It seems contradictory, doesn't it? But the Bible reveals a secret that modern society tries to hide. What if I told you that many who surrendered to the immediate pleasures of the world discovered a path of pain and regret? Prepare yourself for a journey that will challenge your beliefs and reveal hidden truths. Discover how to resist the relentless pressures of society and find lasting peace that few know. Stay with me until the end of this video and see how powerful transformation testimonies can renew your faith and change your life. You are one step away from discovering something that can redefine your existence. Shall we start this journey together? Have you ever felt like a fish swimming against the current? Imagine being in a turbulent river, surrounded by powerful forces, trying to drag you in the opposite direction. This is the scenario many of us face daily when it comes to maintaining sexual purity until marriage. We live in a society that values sexual freedom above almost everything. From an early age, we are bombarded with messages that glorify premarital sex, movies, TV series, songs, and even advertising campaigns. Tell us that exploring our sexuality is normal and desirable. They paint a picture where chastity is outdated and something to be abandoned in favor of a free and uninhibited life. But is this freedom truly liberating? Or does it imprison us in ways we do not realize? Think about how many times you have seen a movie or series protagonist celebrated for their sexual conquests. Now, think about the last time you saw someone exalted for their decision to wait until marriage. It's rare, isn't it? That's because the dominant narrative does not celebrate purity. It ridicules it. The pressure to conform is intense. It is easy to feel that we are alone in our struggle to maintain holiness. Perhaps you have been the target of jokes or disapproving looks from friends or colleagues for choosing a different path. And this pressure does not come only from people around us. It is reinforced by the media and popular culture, which constantly push the idea that we must give in to the desires of the flesh to be truly happy. However, as Christians, we are called to live differently the Bible repeatedly reminds us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and that we must honor them as such. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, Paul tells us, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This social pressure and modern influences are real challenges but not insurmountable. God calls us to a life of holiness and gives us the strength needed to resist temptations. By focusing on His Word and seeking His help, we can find the courage to swim against the current, knowing He is with us every step of the way. Imagine for a moment you are at a grand banquet. The table is filled with delicious foods and fine drinks. At the center of the table, there's a special dish reserved just for you. This dish symbolizes the purity and holiness that God desires for your life. Now imagine that, throughout the party, various people try to convince you to trade this special dish for foods that seem good, but deep down, you know, do not satisfy and worse still, harm your health. This is often how sexual temptation presents itself. In the spiritual world, sexual purity is much more than a simple lifestyle choice. It is a divine call. God calls us to live a life of holiness, and this includes our sexual life. The Bible is clear about sexual immorality. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, 4, we read, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. This sanctification is a continuous process of moving away from sin and drawing closer to God. It is recognizing that our bodies are not just ours. They are temples of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6, 18, 20, Paul instructs us, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, 
But whoever sins sexually, sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God, we were bought with your butt. This call to purity is not a heavy burden or an arbitrary restriction. It is an invitation to a full and meaningful life, aligned with God's purpose for us. When we choose to live according to divine standards, we honor God with our bodies and lives. We are choosing the special dish He prepared for us, instead of settling for the crumbs of the world. But why does God care so much about our sexual purity? Because He knows that sexual sin has deep and lasting consequences. It is not just about physical actions, but about spiritual bonds that can distance us from Him. Sexual immorality creates a separation between us and God, a chasm that only grace and repentance can bridge it. God loves us deeply and desires the best for us. He does not call us to purity, to deprive us of pleasure, but to protect us from the destructive consequences of sin and guide us to a life of true satisfaction and joy in His presence. By seeking to live in holiness, we are responding to His love and aligning ourselves with His perfect plan for our lives. You are climbing a majestic mountain, each step taking you higher, each breath filling your lungs with the pure air of altitude. But now imagine that instead of properly preparing and following the safe path, you decide to climb without equipment, without training and without thinking about the consequences. The result can be devastating. Likewise, the decisions we make about our sexual life can have profound and lasting impacts on our emotions and physical health. Let's first talk about the emotional impacts. Society often downplays the emotional effects of sexual relationships outside of marriage, treating them as mere casual experiences. However, the reality is quite different. When we engage sexually, we are not just sharing our bodies. We are connecting our soul. And when these relationships end, we often leave pieces of ourselves behind, carrying emotional wounds that can take years to heal. Have you ever felt empty after a relationship that was supposed to bring joy? The truth is that sex outside the context of the commitment of marriage can lead to feelings of guilt, shame, and regret. These feelings are often accompanied by a sense of personal devaluation, as if we had traded something precious for a fleeting moment. In 1 Corinthians 6.18, Paul warns us, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually, sins against their own body. This is because sexual immorality affects the core of our being, causing deep damage. Now think about the physical impacts. The physical consequences of sex outside of marriage are equally serious. Sexually transmitted diseases SATS, are an alarming reality that many prefer to ignore. These diseases not only affect immediate physical health, but can have long-term repercussions including infertility and chronic health complications. Additionally, premature and multiple sexual relationships increase the risk of physical and emotional traumas that can affect our well-being in ways that are not always immediately visible. But there is also a positive consequence for those who choose to wait. Sexual purity paves the way for a healthy and lasting marriage. When two people enter marriage with a commitment to holiness, they build a foundation of trust and mutual respect. This solid foundation is essential for facing the challenges that will arise throughout a shared life. The Bible offers us a clear model for healthy sexuality. In Hebrews 13:4, we read, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. When we honor God's plan for sexuality, we protect our hearts and bodies from the deep wounds that sexual sin can inflict. We live in an era that exalts sexual freedom, but it is crucial to remember that true freedom comes from obedience to divine principles. 
Therefore, when considering the decisions we make in our sexual life, let us remember that they are more than mere personal choices. They are decisions that deeply affect our emotional and physical health. God, in His infinite wisdom, calls us to a life of holiness, not to deprive us, but to protect us and bless us with healthy and meaningful relationships. Imagine you are at a masquerade ball where everyone around you is wearing extravagant disguises. As you move through the hall, you realize you are the only one without a mask. The gazes begin to turn towards you and a feeling of discomfort grows within you. It is tempting to put on a mask to blend in with the others to avoid the feeling of being different. This is the scenario that many Christians face when it comes to maintaining sexual purity in a world that often ridicules chastity. Peer pressure can be a powerful and overwhelming force. In our daily lives, we are constantly bombarded by messages that glorify sexual freedom. Whether in casual conversations on social media or in the media, the message is clear. To be accepted, you must conform to the world's standards. Friends and colleagues may ridicule the idea of waiting until marriage, treating it as something outdated and irrelevant. It may seem that everyone around you is wearing masks of social approval, and the temptation to conform to avoid exclusion is real and palpable. But as Christians, we are called to a different standard. In Romans 12 to 2, Paul exhorts us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This call to transformation is a powerful reminder that we are not meant to follow the crowd, but to follow Christ. And following Christ often means swimming against the current, even when it makes us a target of ridicule or misunderstanding. Have you ever wondered why conformity is so seductive? It is because, deep down, we all desire to be accepted and loved. We want to feel that we belong to something greater than ourselves. But here's the liberating truth. Our true identity and acceptance come from God, not the world. When we place our trust in His Word and His purposes, we find a peace and strength that no social approval can offer. Remember the story of Daniel and his friends in Babylon. They were surrounded by a culture that did not share their beliefs and values. The pressure to conform was immense, but they remained firm. In Daniel 1.8, we read that Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. His decision to stay faithful to God, even under intense pressure, resulted in divine blessings and favor. Likewise, when we choose holiness and purity, we are declaring that we belong to God. We are choosing the mask of true identity in Christ instead of the temporary masks of social acceptance. And although this may put us at odds with the world, it aligns us with heaven. Peer pressure can be overwhelming, but God's grace is always sufficient. As we seek His strength and guidance, we can resist the pressures to conform and live according to the high standards He calls us to follow. Our journey may be challenging, but the reward is eternal. A life lived in holiness, in communion with our Creator, who loves us and accepts us unconditionally. Imagine you are about to enter a sacred temple, a place of worship where the presence of God is palpable. As you approach, you realize you need to remove your shoes, purify yourself, and prepare your heart to enter such a holy space. This ritual of preparation is a reminder of the respect and reverence we must have for the holiness of God. Now think of the sexual act as a kind of entry into a sacred space, a union that goes beyond the physical and touches the spiritual. When we unite sexually with someone, we are not just sharing our bodies. We are intertwining our souls. The Bible teaches us that the sexual act creates a deep spiritual bond. In 1 Corinthians 16, Paul warns us, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. This bond is powerful and significant. 
designed by God to be experienced within the covenant of marriage. But what happens when this bond is formed outside the context of marriage? The spiritual union that should be a blessing can become a source of pain and confusion. Sexual relationships outside of marriage often result in a series of spiritual consequences. Instead of drawing us closer to God, these acts can create a barrier between us and Him. Sexual sin has the power to obscure our spiritual vision, distancing us from God's purpose for our lives. Have you ever felt distant from God after committing a sexual sin? This is not a coincidence. Sexual immorality affects not only our bodies, but also our souls. It leaves us spiritually vulnerable, opening doors to evil influences and distancing us from intimacy with God. The guilt and shame that accompany these acts can lead us to avoid God's presence instead of running to His arms for repentance and forgiveness. But there is hope. The beauty of the gospel is that it offers redemption and restoration, no matter how far we have strayed. In 1 John 1 9, we find the promise. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is an invitation to spiritual restoration, a chance to break unwanted bonds and reestablish our connection with God. God desires that we experience the fullness of spiritual union within the safe and sacred confines of marriage. He calls us to honor our bodies and souls, living in holiness and purity. By obeying His commandments, we protect our spirits from the destructive consequences of sin and experience. The true freedom and joy that come from an intimate relationship with our Creator. Just as entering a sacred temple requires preparation and reverence, approaching the sexual act demands the same. When we treat our sexuality with the respect and holiness that God calls us to have, we live according to His perfect design, honoring Him and ourselves every step of the way. Imagine a beautiful garden, carefully cultivated and surrounded by high walls to protect it from strong winds and predators. Within this garden, vibrant flowers and delicious fruits grow in abundance, nourished by rich, well-cared-for soil. This garden is a metaphor for marriage, a sacred institution created by God to flourish within a safe and protected space. Marriage is more than a social contract. It is a divine covenant, a deep commitment between a man and a woman before God. In Genesis 2.24 we read, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. This union is designed to be exclusive and permanent, a reflection of God's unbreakable and faithful love for us. Within marriage, the sexual relationship is celebrated as a precious gift from God, intended to strengthen the bonds of love and intimacy between husband and wife. It is within this context that human sexuality finds its fullest and most satisfying purpose. However, when we seek sexual satisfaction outside of marriage, we dishonor this divine covenant and risk destroying the relationships that God has called us to protect and nurture. Marriage offers a safe environment where emotional, spiritual, and physical needs can be met in a healthy and sacred way. It is a space where mutual trust and respect can grow where spouses can support each other through the joys and challenges of life together. In Ephesians 5.25, Paul instructs, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This sacrificial and selfless love is the divine model for marriage. But why does God value marriage so much? Because it is a reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church. In Ephesians 5, 31, 32, Paul explains, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. But I am talking about Christ and the church. Marriage is a powerful symbol of Christ's eternal commitment to his people, a covenant based on love, faithfulness, and sacrifice. Moreover, marriage is fundamental for building strong families and communities. It is within this unit 
that children are raised and taught in the ways of the Lord, learning about love, respect, and responsibility. The stability provided by a solid, God-centered marriage has a lasting impact, not only on the lives of the spouses, but also on future generations. Marriage, therefore, is not just a convenient arrangement, it is a sacred vocation. By honoring marriage as God planned, we are declaring to the world that we value His designs and seek to live according to His principles. We are choosing to protect the garden of our marital life, cultivating it with love, patience, and devotion. In a world that often devalues the sanctity of marriage, we are called to be living witnesses of the transformative power of this divine covenant. By living our marital vocation with faithfulness and love, we reflect the beauty of Christ's relationship with His Church and experience the fullness of the blessing that God desires for each of us. Imagine you are walking on a winding trail in a dense forest. Suddenly, you realize you took the wrong path and are lost, surrounded by tall trees and increasing darkness. Fear and despair begin to take hold. But then, in the distance, you see a flickering light, a beacon of hope calling you back to the right path. This journey of finding the light is a metaphor for repentance and forgiveness. We all, at some point in our lives, stray from the path that God has prepared for us. Sin, especially sexual sins, can lead us to a feeling of loss and separation from God. We may feel as if we are trapped in a dark forest, unable to find our way back home. But the good news is that God, in His infinite mercy, offers us a way back. Repentance. Repentance is not just feeling remorse or guilt for what we have done. It is a deep change of heart and mind, a decision to turn away from sin and turn to God. In Acts 3.19, Peter calls us to this transformation. Repent then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Repentance is recognizing our failure, confessing our sins, and making a firm decision to follow God's ways. But repentance is only the beginning. The true miracle lies in the forgiveness that God offers you. Imagine a record of all your failures, mistakes, and sins written in a book. Now imagine that God, in His grace, takes this book and wipes it clean, leaving the pages white as snow. This is the power of divine forgiveness. In 1 John 1 9th, we find the comforting promise. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God not only forgives our sins, He purifies us, removing all stains and renewing us completely. This forgiveness is an undeserved gift, an act of love that restores our relationship with the Creator and gives us a new opportunity to live in holiness. God's forgiveness also frees us from the burden of guilt and shame. Often we carry the weight of our past mistakes, allowing them to define who we are and how we see ourselves. But when God forgives, He calls us to leave those burdens behind. In Isaiah 43, 25, God declares, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. This divine forgetting gives us the freedom to move forward with confidence, knowing we are loved and accepted by God. However, repentance and forgiveness are not just personal experiences. They call us to forgive others in the same way we have been forgiven. Jesus taught us to pray, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. The forgiveness we receive must flow through us to positively impact our relationships and community. In a world that often condemns us and holds us to our mistakes, the message of repentance and forgiveness is a bright light of hope. God offers us a new beginning, a chance to rewrite our stories with grace and love. By accepting His forgiveness and committing to live in righteousness, we experience the depth of God's love and the joy of a renewed life. Imagine you are a soldier in a fortress during the night. The darkness is deep and silent. 
but you know enemies may be lurking in the shadows, ready to attack at any moment. Your only defense is to stay vigilant and be in constant communication with your commander, receiving instructions and encouragement. This image helps us understand the importance of prayer and vigilance in the Christian life. The Christian life is a constant battle against temptations and spiritual forces that seek to divert us from God's path. Jesus, aware of this reality, clearly instructed us, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26, 41. These words were spoken in the Garden of Gethsemane, moments before his arrest. Even knowing what was to come, Jesus spent the night in fervent prayer, showing us the importance of maintaining a direct line with the Heavenly Father. Prayer is more than a list of requests. It is a continuous dialogue with God. Through prayer, we strengthen our connection with Him, seeking His guidance, strength, and wisdom. Imagine prayer as a thread that connects us to God's heart, allowing us to access His peace and power at all times. Paul exhorts us to pray without ceasing. For 17, emphasizing that prayer should be a constant and integral practice in our lives. But prayer must be accompanied by vigilance. To be vigilant is to be alert, to recognize the traps and attacks the enemy places in our path. It is keeping our eyes open and our hearts sensitive to temptations that can lead us to sin. Peter warns us, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter 5 8. Without vigilance, we can easily be caught off guard and fall into the enemy's traps. Imagine a shepherd caring for his sheep in a field. He knows wolves can attack at any moment, so he stays alert constantly watching and protecting his flock. Likewise, we must protect our hearts and our faith, remaining vigilant against influences and temptations that can draw us away from God. Vigilance also means taking practical steps to avoid situations that may lead us to sin. This may include setting healthy boundaries, avoiding certain company or environments, and filling our minds and hearts with God's word. The psalmist reminds us, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, 11. God's word is a powerful weapon against temptations and a guide for a holy life. Furthermore, the Christian community plays a crucial role in our vigilance. Being surrounded by brothers and sisters in faith who encourage us and hold us accountable can make all the difference. In Hebrews 10, 24, 25, we are called to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. A strong faith community helps us stay vigilant and firm on God's path. Prayer and vigilance are like two wings of a bird, essential to maintain spiritual flight. Without one of them, our journey becomes unstable and vulnerable to enemy attacks. When we combine a life of fervent prayer with constant vigilance, we are equipped to resist temptations and remain firm in faith. God calls us to this dual practice, not only to protect us, but to lead us to an abundant life filled with His presence. Imagine a dark night without stars, where the only visible light is that of a distant lighthouse. This lighthouse, shining brightly, guides lost sailors back to a safe harbor. In the same way, life testimonies are like lighthouses in the darkness, illuminating the way for those who feel lost and directionless. Testimonies have incredible power to transform lives. They are personal accounts of people who have experienced God's grace and love in profound and tangible ways. When we hear the story of someone who faced similar struggles to ours, and found redemption, we are encouraged to believe that the same God can work miracles in our lives. Think of the story of Joseph in the Bible. Sold as a slave by his own brothers, falsely accused and imprisoned, Joseph could have easily given in to despair. However, he remained faithful to God 
and eventually was elevated to the position of governor of Egypt. His life is a testimony of perseverance and trust in God, even in the most difficult circumstances. But we do not need to look only at biblical figures. There are countless contemporary testimonies that inspire and edify our faith. Imagine the story of a young woman who, from an early age, was pressured to follow the world's standards. She got involved in harmful relationships and sought to fill the void in her soul with temporary pleasures. However, finding herself at a point of despair, she cried out to God, repenting and seeking a new life. Today, she testifies about the transformative power of Christ's love, encouraging other young people to follow the path of holiness. Testimonies are not just about great miracles. They are also in the small daily victories, like that man who fought against addiction and through prayer and the support of his community, found the strength to overcome his vices. Each day of sobriety is a testimony to God's sustaining grace. There are also stories of couples who, after years of conflict and betrayal, found redemption and restoration in their marriages. Their stories show that even when everything seems lost, God can restore and renew love and trust between two committed people. Testimonies play a fundamental role in building our faith. They remind us that we are not alone in our struggles and that God is faithful to complete the good work He began in us. When we hear stories of transformation, we are inspired to remain firm, knowing that the same God who worked in others lives is also working in ours. In Revelation 12:11, we read, They triumphed over Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. The power of testimony is so great that it can overcome the forces of evil and bring victory to those who believe. Imagine the story of a man who grew up without knowing a father's love, seeking acceptance in wrong places and making destructive decisions. But one day he heard the testimony of someone who had experienced God's love as a heavenly father. This sparked a flame of hope in his heart. By giving his life to Christ, he found a new identity and purpose. And now he shares his story to help others find the same love and acceptance. Every testimony is a living proof that God is active and present in our world. They show us that regardless of circumstances, there is always hope and redemption available in Christ. As we hear and share these life stories, we are strengthened in our faith and encouraged to live according to God's divine purpose for our lives. Imagine a vast desert where the heat is relentless and the thirst is constant. Walking through this desert, you find an oasis, a place where clear, refreshing water springs abundantly. The renewal of faith is like finding this oasis amidst life's adversities, a moment of renewal revitalization and spiritual revival. The Christian life often can feel like a journey through a desert. Difficulties, temptations, and trials can drain our spiritual energy and make us question our faith. But it is precisely in these moments that the renewal of faith becomes crucial. The Bible offers us numerous examples of how the renewal of faith can transform lives. Think of the prophet Elijah, after a great victory over the prophets of Baal, he finds himself discouraged and fleeing into the desert, wishing for death. In 1 Kings 19, we see God renewing Elijah's faith through a personal and intimate encounter. God not only feeds Elijah physically, but also spiritually, speaking to him in a gentle whisper. This encounter revives Elijah's faith and prepares him to continue the work God had assigned to him. The renewal of faith is not just a one-time event, but a continuous process. In Romans 12, 2, Paul instructs us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This verse reminds us that the renewal of faith begins in the mind and heart a daily transformation that aligns us with God's will. 
One of the most powerful ways to renew our faith is through God's Word. The Bible is an inexhaustible source of inspiration, encouragement, and wisdom. By meditating on the Scriptures, we allow God to speak directly to our hearts, strengthening our faith and guiding us in our spiritual journey. The P.S. Almist beautifully expresses this in Psalm 119, one off. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. God's word illuminates our path, renewing our faith every step of the way. Prayer also plays a vital role in the renewal of faith. It is through prayer that we connect intimately with God, presenting our concerns, doubts, and fears, and receiving His peace and guidance. Philippians 4, 6, 7 encourages us. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer leads us to a place of rest and renewal in God's presence. Moreover, fellowship with other believers is essential for the renewal of faith. When we gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ, sharing our experiences, encouraging each other, and worshiping together, our faith is strengthened. Hebrews 10, 24, 25 exhorts us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The renewal of faith is an invitation to revive our relationship with God, allowing Him to renew our strength and empower us to live according to His purpose. It is like drinking the living water that Jesus offers in John 4.14, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Therefore, let us seek this renewal daily, allowing God to transform and revitalize us so that we can face life's adversities with renewed and unshakable faith. Imagine you are sailing on a vast ocean, surrounded by deep waters and endless skies. To reach your destination, you need a compass and accurate maps to guide you through the unknown waters. Similarly, in the journey of life, we need discernment and wisdom to navigate the complexities and challenges we encounter. Discernment is the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, between truth and falsehood. It is like a lighthouse that illuminates our path in the midst of darkness and helps us avoid hidden dangers. In Proverbs 3:21-23. We read, My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. Discernment is crucial because it allows us to make decisions aligned with God's will. Think of Solomon, known as the wisest man who ever lived, when God offered him anything he desired, Solomon asked for wisdom to govern the people of Israel with justice and discernment. In 1 Kings 3.9 he said, So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? God was pleased with this request and granted Solomon extraordinary wisdom. But how can we acquire discernment and wisdom in our own lives? First, we must seek God with humility and an open heart. James 1 5 encourages us, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. God is the source of all wisdom, and He is willing to grant us discernment when we sincerely seek Him. Another way to acquire discernment is through reading and meditating on God's Word. The Bible is a treasure of divine wisdom, and by studying it, we are empowered to understand God's ways and apply His principles in our lives. Psalm 119, 105 reminds us, Your Word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. 
God's Word illuminates our minds and guides us in our decisions. The Holy Spirit also plays a vital role in granting us discernment. Jesus promised in John 16, 13. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. The Holy Spirit teaches, advises, and gives us the ability to discern the truth amid the world's lies. Moreover, wisdom can be found through counsel and fellowship with other believers. Proverbs 15.22 tells us, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Seeking the guidance of godly people who have more experience and spiritual maturity can help us make wise decisions and avoid mistakes. Discernment and wisdom also protect us from the enemy's traps. In Ephesians 6-11, Paul exhorts us to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Part of this armor is the ability to discern spiritual attacks and resist the temptations that can divert us from God's path. Furthermore, discernment helps us live with integrity and justice. In Philippians 1-9-10, Paul prays, And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Discernment empowers us to choose what is excellent and live lives that reflect God's holiness and righteousness. Therefore, let us constantly seek discernment and wisdom in our walk with Christ. May we depend on God study His Word, follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and seek counsel from other believers. In this way, we will be equipped to navigate the turbulent waters of life with confidence and security, knowing that we are aligned with God's will. Imagine a bright bonfire on a cold night. Each log and branch contribute to the intensity of the fire, and together they create a heat that drives away darkness and cold. Now imagine one of these logs is removed and set aside. What happens? It slowly loses heat and flame, while the main bonfire continues to burn intensely. This image illustrates the importance of community and support in the Christian life. As Christians, we were created to live in community, to support each other and grow together in faith. The Bible is full of examples and instructions on the importance of being connected with other believers. In Hebrews 10, 24-25, we are encouraged. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The Christian community is a place where we can find encouragement and support. When we face challenges and difficulties, having brothers and sisters in Christ by our side makes all the difference. They can remind us of God's promises, pray with us and for us, and help us carry our burdens. Galatians 6 2 instructs us, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Additionally, the community offers accountability. When we are surrounded by other believers, we have people who can help us stay on the right path, correct us with love when we stray, and celebrate our spiritual victories. In James 5.16 we read, Therefore confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Confessing our sins and struggles to other believers and receiving their prayers is a vital aspect of community life. The community is also a place for spiritual growth. As we gather to study God's Word, worship together, and serve each other, we grow in our knowledge of God and our faith. Proverbs 27:17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Interaction and mutual discipleship help us become more like Christ. Moreover, the community offers an opportunity to serve. Each of us has been given unique gifts and talents that can be used to edify the body of Christ. In 1 Peter 4.10, we are called to use our gifts to serve others. 
Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. When we serve in the community, we not only bless others but also find purpose and fulfillment. The Christian community is also a fortress of prayer. When we gather, we can intercede for each other and for the needs of the world around us. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Community prayer is powerful and effective, uniting us in purpose and aligning our hearts with God's will. Moreover, the community offers comfort in times of pain and loss. When we go through difficult times, the presence and support of fellow believers give us strength and comfort. In 2 Corinthians 1.34, Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Finally, the community is a living testimony to the world of God's love. Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. When we live in love and unity, we demonstrate to the world the reality of the gospel and the transformative power of Christ. Therefore, do not underestimate the value of community and support in your Christian journey. Actively engage in a local church, participate in small groups, seek authentic Christian friendships, and serve others with your gifts. Together, as part of the body of Christ, we can face any challenge, grow in our faith, and glorify God in everything we do.